What's up guys, I'm Jesse from Mole and the Maker and today we're gonna to do a start to finish overview of, of the, the adventure van. It's my van. What's up guys, I'm Sam. I'm usually the person behind the camera or behind the computer for Jesse, but since this is my van, I'm gonna go over it with you. So unlike Jesse, we don't have kids yet, so it's just me, my wife, and my dog, and it makes it a little easier to travel around and go camping and all that kind of stuff. So we wanted to keep it simple, and we went with this Econoline van. The goal for this van was to keep it as modular as possible. We wanted to be able to convert it from trip to trip, adventure to adventure, and to fit our needs. So like in the first episode, we started with the demo. We pulled out all the seats, because it's a passenger van, and tore out uh, all of the interior and stripped it down to the bare bones. Then we moved on to the subfloor. For the subfloor, we threw down some studs, we threw down some insulation, then we topped it off with a half inch piece of plywood. After the subfloor, we put in the flares. The flares are from Flare Space. What they do is they allow you to sleep sideways, put the bed sideways, and we can even fit a full size bed in there. But putting it sideways saves you about two feet in the living room, uh, which is great. Because of that, it gives us a ton of room inside uh, when we're inside the vehicle at night, moving around, having to get changed, whatever it may be. For us, that was a huge plus. Next, we moved on to the ceiling. So for the ceiling, it was pretty simple. We added some studs along the ribs, threw some insulation in, and then added some tongue and groove cedar across the entire thing. If you want more details, you can check out episode two of the interior of the whole build. We'll really go into the cabinets and the ceiling and all the other interior. After the ceiling was complete, we went through and added all the cabinets. Start with the battery cabinet and then the two big side cabinets. Now these were pretty simple. We used some pocket holes, screws, and Brad nailed a bunch of plywood and faced it all that way. We rounded the doors to add some character, added some paint, they turned out really nice. So after that, we added some swivel seats. Now these swivel seats add about three feet of usable space while you're camping. Before the seats were all turned around, you can never sit in them while you're camping. Now this actually adds more of a living room feel as you can turn the seats so you can talk to everybody and not just have to be in the bed or sitting on the ground, something like that. So next we added the flooring. But the flooring, we wanted to stay with the modularity idea. And since we're gonna be using this for like a garage space and many different things, we went with rubber flooring instead of laminate wood or anything like that. Before we installed the rubber flooring, we installed the glide for the Iceco refrigerator. So we put the slide on the left side of the van because it opens up from this side, but also the power is in the back of the refrigerator and that's where we have an outlet in the cabinet for it. So we pushed it off to the left and mounted it into the studs on the plywood. Because there's some little bits here, that we're not gonna cover with the rubber. We just painted them black and polyed them uh, to get them a little more waterproof. So after we got the ice coast slide mounted, we took the half inch rubber mats and cut them with a razor blade to size. So towards the front, we actually mounted an L-Track that goes along the whole bottom so we can mount these tie downs up front because we are getting into e-bikes, we have mountain bikes, uh, we have all that kind of stuff. We just wanna be able to tie down anything, maybe a cargo net to just keep all the cargo in the back so it doesn't run into our dog. So we put those mounts in. So we also put a couple single point L-Track mounts here in the back so we could tie down things back here. And then there's a couple up higher in the front as well. So after we finished the flooring, we went on and trimmed out the rest of the van, just touched it up where there were some holes from the seat belts and things like that. And then we went and painted the whole thing. So we went with a gray and orange and green color scheme. We wanted to add a little bit of flare and we painted a topographical map and the flares, which we thought was cool and on the shelf table uh, for the power supply. So that's pretty much it for the interior of our van. The last thing we really wanted to do was improve some of the exterior features of our van. For the exterior of the van, we wanted to keep it simple, but make it a little more adventure ready for us to hold more things. So we wanted to put a rack up top. We actually wanted a platform rack, but after looking into them, for the size of the van, because it's so much larger than most other vehicles on the top, it's quite expensive. So instead we went with these bars off Amazon. So these bars are just simple work van bars um, that would hold ladders, things like that. They even had some adapters on the side uh, for more gear, but they 
fit our needs. They actually hold our canoe, they hold the storage box that we also added up top. It works for us. And so we went with it and it saved us a lot of money. Along with the canoe, we also wanted extra storage up top. So we got a storage box similar to like a Thule um, that we put on top. We had to adjust the one of the bars back a little bit so it can mount properly, um, which was kind of a bummer because now it's not symmetrical, but who cares? So we put it up top and uh, now we have a little more storage for anything that's wet, like uh, paddles or life jackets or just extra storage of things that we don't want to put in the van. So now that we have the storage box up top, we're gonna need to access that on a regular basis as we use it. So we went and got a ladder from American Backroad Company. That ladder was incredibly easy to install. I just threw it on the gutter mounts, found where I needed to drill holes, and then bolted it down. We also added a light bar on the front bumper. There is a huge gap in the front bumper and some people put winches there. Um, I opted for a light bar just because it's simple and I'm not getting into anything too crazy, at least not right now. So we put a light bar up front and it just adds a little functionality while driving at night. Final thing I did was I took off the granny steps. Now those steps were huge because they're OEM steps, they're just big plastic steps. I don't think they look good. I think the van looks better without them. It, it makes it look like it sits a little taller. The only downside is that it actually blocked a lot of wind from hitting the doors. So all of that sound dampening we added to the vehicle has kind of gone away. Besides the wind, the van is tall. So we got a little step stool. My wife is shorter, but it's a small price to pay for beauty. So overall, this was a really fun build. Uh, some of our favorite things in the build is the power supply. For me, I think the Sea Devil, which is the power unit that we decided to put in, works fantastic. You can charge it three different ways. We put a shore power on the outside so we can just plug an extension cord right in. It can charge it that way through the alternator or through a solar panel. The 2000 watts, it lasts a long time charging the fridge, charging our drones, GoPros, things like that. Overall, it's a really good feature to have. Another great feature of the van is the dual zone ice co fridge. This fridge is amazing. You can set up each zone as its own temperature. So short trips, we just put both zones into refrigerator. Long trips, we make one a freezer, one a refrigerator. So when it's getting to temp, it pulls about 60 watts. But once it's at temp, it only pulls a two watt from our power station. And because of that two watt, it feels indefinite. We actually got over five days of use and then uh, we were home, so we didn't need it any longer. So it definitely lasts a long time uh, with the right temperature outside. If it's hot, it'll shrink it down a bit, but the ice co is just amazing. My other favorite feature is the flooring. Doing the rubber flooring, the half inch rubber, it turned out really nice. It's durable, easy to clean. You can take them out and just wash them off if they get that muddy. I really like that since they're rubber, all the cargo that you stack in here, when you drive around, they don't just slide everywhere. They stay in place because it, it's rubber. It sticks to the plastic uh, cargo buckets or whatever you put in here. The only downside is that it does smell like rubber a little bit. When we first put them in, you could smell it quite a bit. Now the smell is dissipated, so only occasionally when it's really hot out will you smell that rubber. Overall, we think it's worth the downside versus uh, how versatile the flooring is. Our last favorite feature of our build is the bed system. The bed system is amazing. It's so easy to deploy with the IKEA slats and the bungee board on top and the folding mattress. It was just very simple. Being able to sit it sideways with the flares helped so much and we can deploy it, leave it up while we drive and it all stays in one position and it doesn't shift at all. So some updates we'd like to do that we haven't gotten to yet and that just really weren't in the budget. First would be making this four wheel drive, making it so we can go anywhere, anywhere they wanna go or if we're doing a trip, we can just take a back road and literally we're not limited on anything. Another thing we'd like to improve is the rack system. Although this works, it's the cheaper route. Uh, we would like the platform so we could get up there and even stand on it to move things around if we need to. Those platform racks just seem to work so much better for the overlanding style adventures and so that's something we would definitely like to get into. On top of that rack we'd like to put in a solar panel that way we can charge the solar power generator 
all the time. We've already tested it with our fold out solar panel. When it's hooked up, it, the fridge will run indefinitely. So that's something we'd like to add to. Well, thanks for watching guys. For more details, go check out episodes one and two of the van build. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We got a lot of projects coming up, including uh, doing some trips with the van and the new trailer we just remodeled and upgrading my truck to be a little bit more off-road truck as well. Check out our website at molenthemaker.us and make sure you follow us on Instagram. We'll see you guys next time. Nice pun. We went to add some flares. I didn't even catch that. <laughs> That's it. What are you doing with your hands? I'm just, I'm I put them together all the time. This is, yeah. Ready? Look at the yeah. camera. Don't look at me. Look at the camera. Check right. you next time. <laughs> That's good enough. It's like, I don't know what to do with <laughs> <laughs>